something special is happening. And the more the world denies Israel's claim to Jerusalem and its ancestral homeland, the more Israeli archaeologists are making amazing finds that prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has given the land of Israel to the Jewish people forever. We were able to bring you many of these Bible history stories in 2017, and here are some of my favorites. Danny, what a day we've had. We started out in the remote Judean desert on the trail of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and now we end up at a very special place. This is the baptismal site, according to many historians, where John the Baptist baptized Jesus. But Danny, why are we here? What is the link from John the Baptist to the Dead Sea Scrolls? Well, the tradition that this is the place goes years, centuries back. From the fourth century and on, uh, Christians started coming here. Uh, arguing this is the very place. You have 200 kilometers to choose of, okay? But in the 1950s, the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls proving this uh, link to John the Baptist seemed to indicate that that tradition is valid, is true, because it's a walking distance from this site. It's not far from where we were investigating the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, maybe a five hours walk. Sure. John the Baptist may have been a member of that community, but and they shared a lot of values, but on one thing they differed. The people of the Dead Sea Scrolls argued the water is used for purity. John the Baptist said, no, the water is to be used for redemption and for acceptance of the Messiah, which is soon to come. And Eric, we just made it to the house of Simon the Tanner, as wow. some people believe. This is it, let's go. This is it. Wow. Jamie, for me, this is a very special moment as a Gentile follower of Jesus, because right here, as we've been talking about, the house of Simon the Tanner on the roof, Peter falls into the deep trance, sees a vision from God, arise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter says, not so, Lord, uh, I'm a Jew. I can't eat anything considered unclean. And God says, no, what I have cleansed, do not call unclean. Danny, you've described the bloody siege here by the Assyrians at Lachish. Now we are standing at the very spot where all of that went down. Tell us about what happened at this spot. In the back here, you can see the top of the wall peeking beyond the debris. More of it probably runs just beneath our feet. You can imagine the Judeans here terrified as they're seeing the Assyrians advancing with their battering ram. This is the very place where Lachish was taken. And that battering ram, the intimidation factor as well with those battering rams. Come. Yes, and people that are captured in the battle are impaled, presented in front of the defenders. This was a very, very big tragedy from a Judean point of view. Yeah, big victory for Sennacherib. As you explained, he was gloating about the conquest of Lachish, but then the Assyrians sent a contingent and set their targets on Jerusalem. What came next? On the capital. The book of Isaiah tells a story when the Assyrians, they've exiled the kingdom of Israel, and now they come for the kingdom of Judah. And they've gone through city after city, Lachish and all the others. And all that's left is Jerusalem. The major prize, the capital city, right. Jerusalem. Exactly, Hezekiah is the king. And Hezekiah says it in the Bible, why should the Assyrians come to Jerusalem and find much water? The water is situated outside the walls of the city. Hezekiah says we need to divert the spring to flow entirely within the walls of Jerusalem. And so they engineer this project. And here is the moment engraved in stone for you to see the moment when the two teams of diggers, they come and they meet each other and they embrace and they celebrate. And this says in ancient Hebrew script, oh my God, we did it. We did it. We did it. This was a watershed moment. Literally, the future that we are living today was hanging in the balance. And the archaeology and the Bible come together to tell this amazing story that was, in fact, real. This is the southwestern capstone of the Temple Mount. This stone is more than 2,000 years old. In the year 70, when the Romans are destroying the temple, the second temple, they cast off stones weighing many, many tons. All this area around us, you could see the destruction of the second temple. This stone is more special than the others because if you look closely at this stone, you could see there's actually Hebrew writing on the stone. Right there. And it says on it in Hebrew, the Beit Hatikiah, to the trumpeter's house. Now, what does that mean? Yeah. We know that on the Sabbath, going back thousands of years. Where we're standing right here, this was a, a, a shopping center. 
You need to get your things up to, to go to the temple, your sacrifices, your offerings, and you would come here. Yeah, the temple's right, right was right us. above us. Right above yeah. us. And so what would happen? The Sabbath, of course, the, the markets are supposed to be closed. So on Friday, Sabbath Eve, you would have a priest standing at the very southwestern corner of the Temple Mount with a trumpet. And shortly before the Sabbath was set to begin, the priest would blow the trumpet and declare, the Sabbath is coming. Yeah. Time to close your shops, last minute right. purchases, go home and get ready to accept the Sabbath. Time for Shabbat, pack it up. Exactly. First, it says the second year of the revolt, Shnat Shtaim in Hebrew. And the revolt, for, so people know, 66 AD or CE to 70 yeah, AD. Yeah, exactly. About so four it's years long. Four years long. So Temple this is was destroyed in 70. In 70, yes. Yeah. So the most common coins are the second year coins that we find here. Okay. Uh, it says Shnat Shtaim in Hebrew, the second year, which okay. means the year of 67, three years before the destruction. Mm -hmm. People still held this coin during the year of 70. And in the other side, you have the propaganda. The goal of the of the revolt itself, which says Chirut Zion in Hebrew, which is the freedom of Zion. For the freedom of Zion. Yeah. That was the goal of the revolt, to, yeah. to free themselves of the yoke of the Romans, the oppression of the Romans. Yes, exactly. Now I have to say I had a lot of fun doing those stories. It's amazing to see how God is revealing the undeniable truth about Israel to the world. And here at Kufi, we get to be a part of what God is doing in the world today through Israel. Wow. Well, coming up after the break, the threat of Islamic terrorism continued in a major way in 2017. We'll show you some of the most important developments with ISIS and Iran up next as we take you to Syria, Lebanon, London, and beyond. Don't move.